Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone, to the Hoosier Kayak Bassin Podcast. Sorry, it's been a little while since we've brought you a uh, podcast. Everything that's going on in the world, tournament season, all the craziness, uh, things have been altered quite a bit lately on our timeline. But here it is. We got you a brand new episode. Before we jump into that and announce tonight's guest, which, by the way, is awesome. You're going you're gonna to love uh who we got coming on tonight it's going to be super informative a little bit different i'm super excited about it if you can't tell we have another big announcement to make um which is amazing so for gosh alan i don't know over a year now almost i think since the the conception of the program um alan and myself have been on what's known as the angler expert uh team um you know we both uh we both joined up with angler what was it early last year late 2018 i don't even remember uh, yeah point. i met him at i met him at nc last year so that was march gotcha. so it was shortly after that yeah yeah and it was a uh, it was a gosh it was before or just after the classic that i uh started talking to them so uh, the bassmaster classic that is so anyway we've been with them for a while now a great program Great application. Uh, if you've listened to our podcast or, or been to one of the seminars that Al and I put on, you, you've heard us talk a little bit about the app, what it does, and, and the bullseye functionality. Well, another thing that's really great about Angler is the community that they've built within the app. Um, and one of the awesome features of the app is the feed. Uh, it's also available at angler.com as well. But that feed has a ton of great content from creators within the kayak fishing space. So blogs, videos, um, art articles, all of this great stuff. Well, we're excited to announce that not only are we partnering with Angler as experts, but now Hoosier Kayak Bassin is partnering with Angler. So what we're gonna be able to do is offer you guys um, an awesome discount towards all Angler products, but even better yet, Hoosier Kayak Bassin will now be available on the angler platform so you'll be able to watch um watch our watch or listen to our podcast any blogs that we put out will be available on there as well as any other content that we want to share with them so um if you're not already go and subscribe to angler we'll put links as always in the descriptions of these um and then also make a post about it on uh, on our socials but Go ahead, download the app or subscribe to Angler um, and check that out and get ready to start uh, seeing our content flow into that as well as a bunch of other great content, like seriously, a ton of good stuff on there. Right. You know, you know we're all seeking out new information, new, new learnings and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and that through the feed is a platform that is allowing us to get information out there, these contact creators to get that information out there for, for everybody. And as we said, it, you know, it's kayak people. So by doing that, you're supporting one of your own. If you're, you know, in the kayak space, um, but if you're in fishing in general, it's supporting another angler that's out there on the water. That's, you know, living it just like you, right. It's not just a, a rider that's out there not participating yeah. in the sport and, uh, is just, you know, being paid to go out there and produce something. These are real people on the water. Right. Friends of ours, friends of other anglers. So, uh, you know, go check it out. A lot of good information rolling out all the time. Absolutely. And if you are a bass freak like myself and you like everything to do with bass fishing, even if it's not directly related to kayak fishing, it's on there, too. Um, so plenty of information out there. Um, and uh, it's a really cool program. So, again, if you haven't checked it out, go check out Angler at angler.com or download um the angler app on android and apple so yeah all right well that's uh that's our big announcement for tonight let's go ahead and roll right into tonight's episode all right everybody welcome back to the next episode of hoosier kayak bassin and we have a guest tonight that i'm really excited about we have dr rob bell a sports psychologist works with big names in the industry has worked with nfl combine players uh pga golfers a number of different sports here and i'm really excited about this because we hear about the mental side of fishing we hear about it in sports all the time and 
we're all alone out there on the water, right? And things could come crashing down in a hurry. And we're going to pick uh, Dr. Bell's brain here uh, today and figure out how we can stop the, the collision or stop the landslide that may be about to happen here. So, um, Dr. Bell, if you could introduce yourself, give it a little bit of background, and we'll get going. Yeah, sure, man. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Let's uh, let's have some fun. I mean, I mean, I, so I'm a sports psychology coach, so I'm not a licensed psychologist. And the reason why I say that is because, uh, you know, I think when we say psychologist, it'll scare a lot of people off. I know it scares me. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I, I'm I'm a coach, so I mean, I just all I do is work with athletes on helping them perform their best when it matters the most. And, you know, that's all mental toughness is. It's, it's how we perform our best when it matters the most. And the other part about mental toughness that I think is even more difficult, it's, it's how we deal, handle, and cope with the adversity in life, you know, how we handle those setbacks. And I'm a big believer that, I mean, you know, a lot of people, I think, we think it's something that we're born with, and, but it's, it's experiences and it's coaching that we have throughout life that helps us grow you know, that mental toughness and the, the brain is a muscle, you know, the more we exercise, the better we're going to get at it. And so I'm just blessed, man, to work with so many different types of athletes and my, my office changes all the time. So, I mean, depending on, uh, yeah. depending on the sport that I'm working with, um, I really believe, man, I have the best office that there is. And, um, I just, I just love being able to do what I do, man. I, I you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's just a blessing to, to be able to help others. Right, right. So how'd you kind of get into this? So I got into it. So I was, I always say like, I'm not, I work with like four different types of athletes. So athlete number one is, is I call him like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. So that's the athlete that <laughs> thinks, that thinks way too much, you know, I mean, they're smart, but they think way too much. And, uh, and that was the type of athlete that I was, you know, I, I just couldn't shut off the mind. And whenever I asked somebody, they'd always say, oh, well, once the game gets started, you know, you relax. And, you know, I kind of did, but it was always dependent on my performance never dependent on my mental game. And, you know, if things were good, then things were good. But if things were bad, there was no happy medium. It was hot or cold. And so that's that's the type of uh, baseball player that I was. And then uh, when I got to college, and I share this story a lot, but when I got to college, um, you know, I was really – I was off on the, the wrong path. You know, I was partying a lot, and uh, and I thought I could have baseball and, and partying, and that just doesn't work. And when I got to college, I had a really bad accident. I fell off an 80-foot cliff – and, um, you know, fracture, fracture my back, broke my arm and baseball was over. Mm -hmm. And, and it was that, that hinge moment there though, that I, that's when I kind of took that first psychology class and I said, wow, like this is really fascinating stuff. Like this is and and the light bulb went off. It actually went off like in my soul. Cause I knew what I wanted to do at that point. And that was work with athletes, coaches, and teams and, uh, awesome. help them on the mental game. Right. Right. Well, that's, uh, Wow, an eighty foot drop. Yeah, man. You know, I, I didn't. Uh, you know, this was in West Virginia, a little D two school. Um, we're partying for some reason near this bridge. And, and any young people that listen to this, I always try and tell them, like, you know, nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> and it was, it was yeah. definitely after midnight. And for some reason, like, we're just partying near this bridge, and I just had no idea where I was. Um, and. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't jump. I wasn't pushed. I just, I just walked off and uh, hit once and land, lay him at the bottom of this crevasse. They have to cream me up out of it, take me to the hospital. Where my mom is a nurse. And oh, so this, goodness. yeah, she's oldest of 11 Catholic family, man. Like no sympathy oh, on me. Wow. This happens on a Friday. I'm back to school on Monday. Oh, cool. And then I'm, then I'm limping around campus. Now I'm that guy, right? Like, Oh, that's the You're guy right there. I mean, That's you're right. lucky to have survived, let alone. Oh, I absolutely. mean, you didn't have major, major damage, right? Like, it, that's impressive alone that you survived, but then that you didn't even, you know, you were able to actually move three days yeah. later is is crazy. Yeah. So you take no. so you take a psych class, and this light bulb goes off. How many years ago was that? Now, man, so that would have been uh, would have been thirty years ago. No, it wouldn't have been 30. No, it wouldn't have been 30. No, that would have been too old there. <laughs> so, I mean, this 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 accident happened in 96. So, that's okay. that's when it took off. Well, that was close. Is that 30? 25? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to get too older than what I am, man. <laughs> right, yeah. No, that's uh, that's pretty close. Um, okay, so accident happens, and, and some time later, 20, 30 years later, you, you treat your uh, first patient when? 
when so i mean i you know when i got to grad school was in uh, was in 2000 um i just i started working with athletes then so i mean okay. professionally when i started getting paid for it probably 2003 2003 wow and then i okay. and then i was a i was a professor for a while at a uh, university trying to build my business and then you know teach at the same time and then uh it was a fisher cut bait moment in 2011 when I just wasn't happy anymore. I wasn't fulfilling my passion. And, and that's when I left full time was 2011 to start my own business. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And you're located here so, in Indiana. That's right. Yep. In uh, Noblesville, correct? Yes. Your practice is in Noblesville? Yeah. Offices awesome. and Fishers, you bet. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And, and not only are you working with kind of those big names and professional athletes, right? You work with some of the local teams. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that I do is, I mean, I just love trying to help any kind of athlete get to where they want to go. So, I mean, I mean, there are athletes all across the country, really, but I mean, they're executives I work with. And then, yeah, I mean, local. I was the athlete that thought too much and no one could ever help me. So that's why I got into that field. So doesn't matter what the sport is, I'm, I'm working with tons of high school athletes and, uh, and collegiate athletes that are local, too. Right, well, right. you're speaking to me right now on the whole think too much piece, which we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, sure, man. Uh, this I'll, is, this is an interesting you. thing because you, you yeah. said you have four, right? So you named the one. Yeah. Um, Sam's the overthinker. Um, yep. I, I'm not that person, right? So okay, what are the good. three? So the second type of athlete is I call him roadblock athlete. Now, this is the athlete that is going to get so far, but you can see that stop sign just saying like, you know, we're not going to reach our full potential. And the reason why is because there's something that's keeping them from getting to where they want to go. They These are the athletes that keep getting in their own way. And, you know, maybe it was a bad coach-athlete relationship. Maybe it was a real bad loss of confidence. Maybe it was an injury, but something is keeping them from getting where they want to go. So that's roadblock athlete. Third type of athlete is this is the – I call them game day athletes. So this is the athlete that shows up on game day, but we have no idea who's going to show up. You know, it could be Tom Cruise. It could be Adam Sandler. Like there's no consistency at all in this type of, of performer. And then the last one, and this is the one that I think suffers the most, is because these are practice day athletes. Like these are the athletes, man. They work the hardest. You know, they are. These are the proverbial first one there, last one to leave. I mean, really put everything they have into it, on and off. But when the lights shine on, they really just become kind of a skeleton of themselves, man. They they totally change their demeanor and their poise, and and then they just start playing and performing. You know, not to lose, not to make a mistake. Those are the four. Mm -hmm. Which one are you? He's a I mix. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely the guy that puts in all the time and everything like that, but I don't think that when game day comes, I stop. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll be one of those that's, you know, kind of first on the water, last off the water kind of thing. You know? um, but but not to the extreme either, right? So yeah, um, I'm not – I'm not sitting there for months and months doing all this preparation for whatever the tournament is we have coming up. Right. I kind of get focused in on my area or, you know, that one body of water or something like that. And then I'm really focused on that and then kind of transition that transition that over to being on the water. Um, but I don't think I, I mean, I have been definitely, I think when I kind of first started this and I'm a relative newcomer to the sport, I kind of did the, Oh man, you know, if I don't catch a fish, well, man, everybody's going to look at me bad if I don't catch a fish. And then it became, well, well, I, I'll catch a fish, but if I don't catch five to catch a lemon, right, then people are going to look at me. And I'm kind of past that now, I guess. And um, so I'm not sure which one of those four I am. That's good, man. Experience is a great teacher, man. Is is there an I? So we talked about the four types, right? But is there an ideal uh, mental state, right? So like these are these are the things where all need to be approved on, right? They've got some pros and some cons, but is there an ideal mental state? So everybody, everybody is different. I mean, the mental game works the same for everybody else, but everybody has their ideal state. And what's important, and that's what my job is, is to be able to use somebody's experience to help them figure out what's best for them. So if you just okay. think of like a range, like a 10 out of 10, you know, you could use a uh, – like a weightlifter, somebody going to lift a whole lot of weight and then set it back down again. I mean, they have to be at a 10, right? Yeah. And, but, you know, where do we need to be? Some of us need to be like at a four. You know, some of us need to be nice and relaxed. It's enough where we're focused, but we're not tense. You know, we're not 
And then some of us need to be a seven or an eight, you know, but what's really important is just knowing where we need to be. Everybody has that optimal one, but it's, uh, it's just different for everybody. Very cool. Okay. Right. I just saw, uh, there was a big tournament down on Lake Fork in Texas and, uh, Flute Master, one of the biggest names we have from YouTube and, and that, right. He, he didn't have a very good tournament, right. He had a lot of bad things happen. And he said, man, I just cannot fish angry. Yeah. Mm. Right. He kind of went up that scale. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It. That's a that's a perfect example right there. And and then there are some and then there are some that need that edge, right? They need that lighter fluid to to get them juiced up yeah. and ready to go. Yeah. All right. So let's kind of jump in. Like, how do you take that kind of stuff, right? Maybe understanding your style, and how do you start prepping yourself for a, an event? So I mean, that's a great call. You know, I mean, because. Um, I mean, really, I think it's just getting back to knowing what works for you. So, I mean, there definitely is. There's got to be a lot of trial and error that happens. And um, the the way that I think is what's really important, though, is that we always get back to preparing and practicing rather than searching. What I mean by that is that's just kind of universal. What I'll see is that somebody will see somebody doing something and then they'll try it out and then they just won't do it anymore. Or they'll try something out, you know, a little prep wise, and then that works for a while, then they won't do it. And then we just start searching rather than knowing, hey, this is our fundamental formula of how I prepare mm -hmm. and really having that so dialed in because our preparation is what's 100% in our control. And what I think is, is we do not deviate from that. Look, we can make adjustments, but we do not deviate from that whole base of preparation just depending on how we're doing or how we're feeling. That's what's really important. Then we just start chasing. And and that's where I see where most people get in trouble. So they start chasing, they start searching for it rather than getting back to their fundamentals and what they do well. Right. So do you see that a lot with people that start trying to emulate somebody else or the you know the newest magazine article came out and they want to start trying this new thing? Or Yeah, I mean, it can definitely happen. Um <laughs> You, depending on the level that somebody's going to be at, it's just it's natural to look at somebody and think that they need to do something different because that's not how they approach it. And, you know, no matter what, once somebody has some success, um, everybody then just tries falling in line. It's that herd mentality. And until somebody else then has success and then it's the herd mentality that way. So it's it's really, man, it's really so important the way I look at it. It's just everybody's a little bit different. We've got to know ourselves and know how we prepare for it. And, uh, you know, if there's a universal thought, it's always we prepare or we play like we train. That's the part that I think is important, you know. So if we're preparing really intense and then we really try and take it easy that day, um, you know, the day of a tournament, then we're not matching up the way we prepare. Where if we're preparing uh, nice and relaxed, that's how we got to fish. I mean, it's exactly how we got to go into it. So, I mean, I think that's what's really important is we prepare like we train. So, uh, as I'm listening to you, there's a couple things that I'm taking away. First off, what you just said reminds me of practice makes permanent, not perfect, mm -hmm. right? But going back to your earlier statement where you're kind of talking about preparation, it, it sounds like it's about routine. Oh, routine's well, huge. Routine's everything. Absolutely. Right? So establishing some sort of routine and then sticking to it and then only making minor adjustments rather than changing up your whole process. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is Am I tracking right here? Well, yeah, because what happens is, you know, if panic sets in, right? If panic sets in, uh, we, you know, we're not thinking at all instead of getting back to um, and trusting what we know. Um, and that's the part where routine just becomes so big and in our our routine from our day to day, our routine from that morning, how we're um, and then what we're doing on the water as well. Our routine is really, really big. Okay. I think, in fact, I think it's the one thing that we definitely have when we're going to be out there. People even talk about confidence. But if we don't have confidence, what we do have is we still have our routine to fall back on. And that's becomes, I think, the most important thing. It's really affecting our focus. Very good. All right. So that that's uh, that routine you think is probably one of the biggest pieces to this puzzle. No this question. Mental health puzzle. Okay. Every every professional athlete that I've worked with, those that have had like you know 15, 20 years, they're obsessed 
I mean, obsessed with their routine because they know that's really the only thing that they can control and, and never mess with, with that routine. They have it so dialed in. And it doesn't mean like they have to be eating the same exact thing when they wake up in the morning. You know, that becomes superstition. That's, that's not part of routine. Routine's just having, hey, these are the small things that I do that get me dialed in and, and ready to go. Is there, and then we'll move on from this routine piece, but is there within those four mental types or those four athlete types, is there one who benefits more from routine and one who benefits from maybe not having a routine? Boy, I think they all do really. Okay. I, I think it's, I think it's a common thread that combines all those athletes together is that routine. Okay. Very good. I just didn't know if maybe there was a, a certain type of individual who um, maybe is better off just kind of winging it and not prepping it because it just keeps them a little bit more relaxed. But Yeah, you know, and, and that's where then, hey, if we are, if we need to be relaxed, then that's great. Then we know ourselves. And what is the, what are the things that I need to do to help me be relaxed? You know, if, gotcha. if we wing it, though, I mean, I, I always say this, like a – a professional does exactly what an amateur does, but on purpose, you know? Mm. So that's, that's the point about knowing if we're, if we need to be relaxed, man, then some people try to ring it. They don't try to focus as much so they don't get too uptight, but professional does that on purpose. They just know what the tools are in the toolbox to use it. Very cool. So kind of going on that then, what do you think the biggest thing that separates the amateur from the professional? Is that it? The on purposeness of it? It's really, really tough for me to say. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. It's tough for me to say. Now, if we talk about a couple of different sports, because, you know, what I think is, I mean, there's there's a couple of different factors that go into it. If, if we look at the mental game, I think we can look at it kind of like as a pyramid and that hierarchy. And it, it's usually one of these skills. I mean, it always starts with how bad do you want it? So, if somebody is willing to do whatever it takes, then we're back to that point that you excel at, right, Alan, like the preparation. And, you know, are we willing to do whatever it takes? That's a huge That's a huge part to it, you know. Um, the fact of when we start traveling, man, we're on the road. I mean, that's a big part of it as well. Um, the better we get, the more important, I think, off the water becomes than on the water. The, mm -hmm. the other one is that belief, that self-belief in ourselves that we will be successful uh, that's a huge part of it as well. Um, I think that's what separates it. Uh, and then the other one is um, how well we let go of mistakes and how well we move on. You know, if you show me athletes that really get flustered, that really get stressed a lot when things aren't going their way, I'm going to show you somebody that's just not as mentally tough as they need to be. If you show me somebody that can let go of mistakes, it gets back to believing in themselves and knowing what their routine is and knowing how they prepare, I'm going to show you somebody that's mentally tough. So I usually say it's it's one of those things. And then, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I mean, money's a huge factor to it. Um, and uh, the, the part that, is, uh, that I always find to be really amazing is can we maximize that opportunity of when we're going to have it and we're we able to kind of keep that foot on the gas and, and then just maximize those chances when we're going to be able to win? Um, those, those are the parts I think about it. I mean, people talk about consistency. Consistency is great. It's wonderful. You know how hard it is to be consistent? I mean, that part is tough, especially in results. We can be always consistent, I think, in our preparation. Um, but it's about then maximizing those those moments of when we're gonna of when we're gonna get it. So let's talk a little bit. You touched on it before, and I think this kind of falls into the consistency standpoint. Yeah. Uh, is you can only control what you can control, right? And there's going to be things that are inconsistent outside of our control. So what's your recommendation on how people deal with that? Yeah. So a lot of it is just knowing what our triggers are. You know, what is it that gets us juiced up, that gets us out of that state we want to be in, right? So if, again, if we're a person that needs to be at a four, if we start operating at a six or seven or an eight, we're not as relaxed and as chill as we need to be out there. Um, and so that's what we say. It's you, we can't let anything bother us when we're in tournament mode, when we're, uh, we're in competition mode. If we let things bother us, what's it really saying? It's saying I need everything to go my way in order for me to be successful. And that's the part that's just not true. If you show me somebody that cannot let stuff bother them when it's not going well, 
show you somebody that's mentally tough, show you somebody that's going to be successful. And um, I think that's a huge part to it, man, especially when it comes to that mental game. Do you have a strategy yeah. that you recommend people kind of do for that to reset themselves and really pull themselves back where they need to be? So I think, you know, and again, there's got to be context, right? Is this going to be when things aren't going our way? Is it going to be if we if we lost one? Um, I always think that no matter what is we have to set it a goal before we're heading out. This is my mental game goal. I'm not going to let anything bother me today, no matter how the results are going. Then we can do it. Too often, we set the mental game goal as kind of being that co-angler, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, I'm not going to let anything bother me. Well, that on- that's only going to work if we're getting the results that we want. It has to be, it's got to be first and foremost, the only thing that we're focused on is what's that process goal that I'm trying to do out there today. Then we can achieve it. That's how the mental game works. I want to go back uh, to something real quick. So, and, and, and Alan hit one of the two things that I wanted to bring up was, you know, how to overcome. And I think we should, I would like to kind of maybe play out a scenario here after this as a follow-up, okay. but I want to go back real quick before we get into that. You, you talked about the financial end of it a little bit. You talked about the money aspect that is, and people listening to this podcast, some are going to a hundred percent relate to this and others are going to be like, it's just fishing. Why are you worried about, you know, you know, money, but at the higher end of this, especially guys are sacrificing, making huge sacrifices in this sport, just like they do in any other sport, especially like golf, you know, racing, um, stuff where it's a, a, a pay to play. Let's, let's try and keep it in, in that realm, right? Yep. We're not getting million dollar contracts to, to, you know, bounce a basketball. So in that scenario where my family is dependent on it, right? My, um, uh, my income's dependent on it. My bank account is at zero if I don't cash a check. Cause that is the scenario we see out there in the fishing world and in other sports. How, how do you deal with, how do you deal with that? Do you just try to eliminate that from your mind? Do you use it as fuel as power? How, how, how does, how do you coach? Uh, these athletes to handle that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's real. It's um, look, the mental game is simple. It's just not easy. And it's uh, it's knowing that that's a reality that we have to do. But if we, uh, if we marry a lot of times, if we marry our home life with our work, then, then we're going to be divorced to both of them. So it's about being definitely where our feet are. And a lot of times I think we, we kind of take that, that home life, we take that extra stress and we put it on there with us. And sometimes it adds more stress to us. If, um, if I had to say what the skill was that we're touching on that though, is it gets back to belief and faith and faith, faith isn't, isn't faith until it's really, it's all you got. Um, I mean, I see so many people that, get down like that and and it just takes one it just takes one one tournament man one catch to turn everything around and that's what we're getting ready for and then that's always just getting back to that belief that belief um is is what makes that happen and the part is we can never get away from is you know no matter how bad things are no matter how bleak our situation it only takes one takes one opportunity to make everything connect yeah wow Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So now I want to go back to what Alan was touching on and, and you said, Hey, it depends on the context. And I agree, right? There's so many scenarios here. So, but for, uh, for an example, let's, let's walk through, let's walk through something that happens here. Okay. And let's just kind of see like, so let's go with the overthinker, right? Um, so guy he preps and preps and preps and he does the map study and he's he's thinking about it all all the time this is me right i'm talking to alan i'm like this is going on this is going on this change that change this might happen that might happen you know i gotta have plans a through z right so that 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 scenario right that that's the athlete we're talking about so he does all the prep does all the work he gets there he's feeling confident and then something happens weather, yep. huge, huge weather change. Right. 
And he's like, all right, I, you know, I prepped for that. I know what's, I know what's going to happen here. I know what to do. I'm going to go with this game plan. And he goes out there and he gets the bites and it doesn't work out. He doesn't get them in the boat. He doesn't land the fish, whatever. It's halfway through the tournament, no fish in the boat, freaking out. What, what do you tell him to do? Yeah. So thanks for giving me an easy one though, by the way. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> so then it's, then it's getting back to, uh, I think we have to constantly hit that reset button and hitting that reset button has to happen multiple, multiple times, but it's, it's, um, you know, it's having trust in that game plan that we're going to be doing. Our game plan isn't always right. That's the thing. Right. But, we've got to be able to trust it. And at least we're taking out that variable. The things that I see a lot of times is if we don't trust it, man, we're automatically just a little bit more key or a little bit more anxious. And that's what keeps us from being in that state that we need to be in. So part of it is, is how do we reset when things start going against us? How, what are the things that we do? Are we able to take that minute, you know, Focus on our breathing here for, you know, a couple seconds. Let's just de- de-stress, decompress, and let's make sure that um, we eliminate the variables that we need to eliminate. And what is it that I need to do now? What's important now? What happens is, is I think when stuff starts going bad, we automatically just start thinking about the results and then how, and that's where mm-hmm. the stress really comes into results are absolutely where the fear lies. I mean, cause it's all outcome thinking. It's all out of our control. How do we take that deep breath and get back to what's, what's important now? Kind of that win mentality, right? What's yeah. important now? What do I need to focus on right now? And, and what's the game plan here? And that's the part that I think is really important is we got to ha- be able to have that reset button. Now, the other part that is so crucial is what I see is it is, it's that one mistake that we make it's that one error that we make that doesn't allow us to come back it causes that collapse it causes that everything then to start going bad so Mm -hmm. like if our performance is going pretty well and we have that one mistake it collapses immediately and that's the part that's important is after the mistake happens are we able to be composed? Are we able to take kind of that deep breath and then be able to refocus and, and keep our thoughts in check? That's the part that's important. If we can overcome that one mistake, then then we're setting it up for the comeback. So I always teach my athletes that it's de- it's never about the setback. It's always about the comeback. Mm. Love it. What? <clears throat> so I think fishing is a, a little bit unique um, compared to a lot of other sports in that you know, we're out there on a tournament day, a single day, right? And many of our tournaments are multi-day now. Um, you're out there eight, nine hours, right? And and I know personally, um, I've, I'm a lot better than, at it now than I used to be, right? When, when I started off, it's like, you know, you're kind of fired up for the beginning. Things are kind of going along, or maybe they're not. And you kind of hit that middle area of the tournament, right? That <clears throat> maybe uh, 1030 to one o'clock time frame and your tournament's in and at three and and you're just kind of there right and you're going through the motions and you're trying to catch fish but you're not right you don't have what you had in the beginning and then you get in the last hours of the tournament and it's like wow i'm really going to finish strong here right and i'm I'm going to really put it to them how how do you recommend people kind of stay on point for those long durations like that yeah well, I think it's I think it's important. Again, everybody's a little bit different, uh, but I always see it's it's about uh, it's about micro focus. So, can we be focused for thirty minutes at a time here? You know, can we be focused for the next twenty minutes on on what my goal is, and then we got to be able to take breaks, man. Um, if if it's like a gas tank in terms of our focus, we have enough capacity, but sooner or later it's going to be low until we can refill that. And we just got to be able to, I think, take those micro breaks, those mini breaks. That's how we get uh, recharged and, and re-energized during those times. You know, what do you think? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, I've never thought about taking a break while I'm out there. Yeah. Um, unless, you know, unless maybe something didn't go right and I'll kind of chill out a little bit and just kind of do that reset there. But, uh, that's interesting yeah. because we we don't think about 
the mental time out while you're out on the water, right? Yeah. Maybe there's a time, maybe you're running to a different spot or something like that. And you could kind of mentally reset at that point. But if you've got your spot or you've got your cove that you're going to stay in all day and you're just grinding it out in there, I mean, that's what it is, right? It's, it just seems like it's this mental grind. Yeah. And that's the part where it's like, if we notice that we start going through the motions, you know, and we're not focused on what we're doing, man, I think it's okay to be able to take those couple minutes and, and, uh, reset, hit the reset button. Now that's the part so of that's important. That, so kind of take that short term loss for the long term gain. Yeah. I, and I don't, I don't even see it as a loss. I see it kind of as an investment, you know, we're taking investment in our, our mental clarity here because we've got a big stretch that's going to be coming up. Yeah, because if you don't have that mental clarity, you're a little tense, you're a little tight, you do get that bite. Maybe you don't set the hook as quick or maybe you don't, right. you know, land that fish properly. Um, and going back uh, to that scenario, it's basically kind of my scenario from the last tournament I was in. Um, I didn't have like a major freak out, but and I did. I, I, you know, I had those little reset moments afterwards, you know, actually like one of my first fish was a giant come off. And I, you know, I was like, all right, that's all right. Fish are here. They're biting. Reset, take a breath, make another cast. Happens again. So then you start to kind of spiral a little bit. Um, and so I think that's what happened to me. I think that's one of the things that happened to me. There were some other reasons that that was going on that I wasn't aware of at the time. But I was losing fish. And I think a part of it was I wasn't playing them right. I maybe it was a little too rushed or something along those lines because I just didn't take the second to anchor down and kind of recalibrate a little bit, which probably should have, I think goes align with what you're talking about here um, in, in this scenario that Alan just gave, um, which which is really cool. And I think in the sport of fishing, especially, you're gonna have a lot of these moments in which things aren't going to go right. You know, um, kind of like in golf, you make, you make a great swing, and but there's a gust of wind and it knocks that ball way off track or whatever. Um, so just kind of thinking through all those things, and it makes a lot of sense to me. So we kind of touched on this a lot. Is there another piece of this that, that you think we should delve into a little bit? Well, boy, we did touch on a lot, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, I always think, I mean, I just always think that those hinge moments are what's going to be so important, you know. Now we're, we're every single one of us in life, we're getting ready for that one person, that one moment or one decision that makes all the difference. We don't know when that's coming. We know we can't connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect the dots looking backwards and seeing, hey, the impact that that, that, that had. But that it comes back to that belief. And that's what those are the moments that we're getting ready for. We're getting ready for those moments. And then, look, no matter what, nothing is going to prevent us from failure. You know, and some people want to sugarcoat it saying, look, there's no failure. There's only feedback. No, nope, it's failure. Okay. It's pain. It hurts. It sucks. But we've got to have the presence of mind is to, after, after that pain is over to say, man, all right, what did I learn? Mm -hmm. What did I learn from that scenario? Because I'm going to be in it again. And if I, what did I really learn from this? You know, was, it, you know, and then that's, that's what helps us then prepare us for that next moment of when we are going to come through. That's the part that's huge. Awesome. Yeah, because fishing, I mean, even, you know, the best angler of all time, right? Kevin Van Dam, right? He's won 10% of the time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're not always going to be at the top, which we want to be, right? That's I think that's the hardest part, right? You strive, you want to be there. And and I, I know there are people that look at that and say, man, I, I didn't win. I failed. And and maybe it goes back to some of those other things you said, you know, set a, a mental goal, but maybe set some other goals that are short of winning that you can view as success as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, so we, we talk about like heading into, you know, the actual event, but then we got, you know, from that part, we got to be talking about, well, what's our response afterwards, you know, coming out of an event. And I think we always got to focus on, Hey, what did I do well? And then what did I learn? Those are the two keys, man. Then, mm. uh, um, cause then I think those are even two kind of different mentalities, our mentality heading into something then our mentality heading out of it is, Hey, what did I do? Well, cause we got to build that confidence muscle. And the other part of that, that, that helps us grow is man, what did I learn? So if we have a good tournament, if things go well, we're going to have a lot of things we like, 
if things don't go well, then we're going to have more things that we learned. And that's why learning, when we learn, you know, it's painful. It's, it's a tough experience, man. Learning experiences suck um, because it means we got better. Right. So do you tell your athletes then to, like, I mean, take that, consciously take that time afterwards, right? Set aside 30 minutes or an hour or whatever like that and process through that? Yeah, I mean, the way I have my athletes process through it is, uh, is they're keeping a notebook. I mean, they're keeping a detailed notebook after every time that they're performing in terms of what they liked and what they learned. So then that way, because we just forget, we forget. Yeah. And in that way, they got to be able to go back and look at, man, three months ago when I was really doing well, like what was, what was I focused on there? Yeah. And then that becomes the best teacher for them. Plus, too, if we wait too long to record that stuff, right, we, our perception of what really happened starts to change. No question. Um, and I think that's a big thing we've talked about um, with another guest that we had on. He was talking about recording himself with a GoPro and, you know, going back and watching it. And he would he would notice that what he thought happened actually didn't take place. You know, the where he thought he got that bite or made that cast or or whatever. So do you think there do you think there's something to, uh, you know, in other sports, it's film study, right? Um, is that a big part of uh, yeah, the, yeah. That, the process after? Yeah, it's always getting better that preparation. I think that's huge. It's a great technique there. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So I know that you've had uh, some things that you've put out here recently on social media around the coronavirus and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and how it's affecting athletes. Um, I, and then I saw uh, it was one of the Utah Jazz uh, basketball players said, hey, I'm going back and I'm watching my highlights from my college time and my professional time and things like that to try to keep him in the in the mood. And, uh, or you know, when I mean, it got ripped away, right, the season's stalled out, maybe it's done, who knows what's really going to happen with it. Um, and I think that kind of fits into maybe what, what we were talking about here, that that's a strategy that some athletes are using to help them through a difficult situation here. You know, uh, one of my favorite athletes all time, man, was Dominique Wilkins. You know, human highlight reel, baby. I mean, we got to create our own highlight reel. You know, I think that's really important. Um, Yeah, it's a really, really tough time for so many people because we have no control over the situation. We have no idea what's coming up. Always getting back to then the what is in our control. But, man, how do we maximize this time that we're going to come back better for it? A lot of people want to throw it up, say, man, you know, nothing I can do. Let's let's chill. Um, they're going to get passed by mm. because it's it's what's in our control right now. Again, back to that thing. What's important now? The only thing I can focus on is today in this moment, in this hour. Um, am I am I going towards my goals or am I slowly like drifting away? You know, like Rome wasn't built in a day. They say that. Well, Rome wasn't destroyed in a day either. You know, it was a yeah. slow fade, man. And that's the part that's. Um, with our with our daily discipline, our daily habits, like are those the things that we're maximizing? Especially with all the athletes right now, some are going to come back better. Some are going to come back exactly the same. Some are going to come back worse. Um, yeah, it depends on how we deal with this situation. That's awesome because I think people could be saying to themselves, "Well, I can't go fishing," or maybe they can go fishing, but I'm not competing. You take out that element, I, I'm going to lose touch. But there are things you can do: that study, tackle, tackle prep, you know, organization. All of those things. I think also real quick um, for historical context, I don't know if that's the right way to sum this up, but if you're listening to this uh, far after the fact or watching this on to YouTube a year or two later, we're, we're talking about this uh, this pause in all of sports right now and, and really kind of the world going on with uh, what's known as the coronavirus. Um, so we're not going to get into all of that. We're just talking about utilizing this time and the, the, the mental aspect of uh, of sports pretty much being shut down play not going on but still you can utilize this time to to prep and to hone in those skills so yeah i just wanted you know, to kind of sum that up no it's a great time stamp man you know if i could just add to it if that's okay i mean yeah uh, we've heard it but coaches will say it all the time well, you don't know when your last performance is going to be mm. none of these people knew that this was coming none of these people knew and what they wouldn't do to just have one more chance, right? Yeah. One, one more chance is what they wanted. And now this has become a reality. And, hey, maybe it won't ever happen again. 
but we have to approach every single practice, every single tournament that we take. Like it's the last one we're ever going to do. Yeah. And it doesn't mean to make it all stressed out. It just means to, um, to know what our state is going to be and our preparation heading into it because we don't know when the last one's going to be. That's so true. I mean, think about those seniors who played those last couple basketball games in the NCAA. Now, of course, they've been invited to come back the following year, which is going to be a very strange thing. And that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Um, but I mean, think about that. Think about how much harder, how much more passion they would have played with um, if they had that mindset, like, Hey, this, this could pot- potentially be my last game. Cause I think a lot of times, especially, you know, we think about the whole season, right? Like I want to make sure that I'm preserving my body or that I'm, you know, I've got another game coming up or I've got another tournament, or I just want to score enough points to, you know, hit this end goal, right. Of maybe it's angler of the year or making it to a championship or whatever. But man, if you fish lights out all the time, you'd probably end up hitting that goal anyway, you know? So. And then it's just getting back to how we approach our, our daily action, daily habits, man. Yeah. Like it's being able to prepare, like we're going to live forever, but we got to play like it's our last one. Wow. Love it. Love it. Right. Good stuff. So I want to touch on one other area because I want to I end this on a very positive note. Yeah. So we have opportunities where you get on the success train, right? You're winning tournaments, you're winning money. Things, things seem to be going really well. Now, there's some people that can really live in that limelight and are successful that way. There's other people that really don't know how to handle that. And there's other people that, um, I don't know, kind of get this big head kind of, right, it's too much for them. So when you have an athlete that's on that success train, what's your recommendation at that time? Depends on how they're dealing with it, you know. Um, I don't think a lot of times we understand how difficult success is until we get it. Um, Because we think, and this is the part that I think is interesting, is we think what we really want is holding up that trophy, right? Can't be any better feeling in the world than holding up that trophy. That's what we want. This is what we've worked for. This is what we got it. And then we got it. And then it becomes, okay, now what? Or what now? And it happens to everybody. And the reason why is because we're climbing that mountain, we're climbing that mountain, and then we get up to the top of that mountain. You know, if you look at 14ers, if you look at really high mountains, man, nothing lives up there because we can't live up there. We got to come back down. And then that's the real tough part is are we, do we love, do we love it so much that we're willing to get back to that grind and that's what we really love? Or do we just want that trophy? Uh, I can't tell you how many times that I spoke, that I speak with athletes or coaches, people that won the Super Bowl. How long did that feeling last? You know, sometimes they'll say week, months, and it never leaves them, right? But what they really, really enjoyed was the adversity that they were they overcame in order to get to that part. Mm-hmm. They always talk about the relationships, man. They always talk about the the locker room. You know, those were the parts that that became really, really enjoyable. Yeah. And the mountain, the mountaintop moments are awesome. But we can't live up there. And then it's always getting back to then our process. And then that becomes what we really gives us joy then in life. And that's the part of of being able to maximize that stuff. Mm. So I know it's a long-winded answer, but I'm always fascinated by, you know, those that, I mean, again, I've had an Olympic medalist um, that, that, all right, well, well, now what? You know, Olympic medalist, man, that's been, you know, eight years trying to get there. They get there, they get it. And then it's like, okay, now what? Um, happens to all of us. Yeah, it's less about the prize and more about that experience. You know, the the path to it, definitely. So yeah, I think that's really good. I mean, obviously we're we're representing the kayak uh, fishing side of things, right? And I think that's one thing that we we have really strong, right? Is the the experience and you know people are camping together or they're staying in the same houses together and you know it's an experience at, at all these events. It's not and that's about that's the, that's the that's that fun part, man. That's what we always miss when that's gone. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, it's been great. I mean, I appreciate this. I hope you know a lot of people out there listening to this took something away or multiple things away that they can apply in their daily life or <laughs> or their fishing life. Um, so we'll kind of turn it over to you, 
and let you kind of say how can people follow what you're doing um you know any social media sites anything sure like man no i appreciate it i mean my website it's uh it's drrobbell.com so it's d-r-r-o-b-b-e-l-l.com i've got a newsletter that goes out every friday my next book's going to be coming out it's called puke and rally it's not about the setback it's about the comeback <laughs> love it um, but uh, i got seven books out there well this will be the seventh i got six others for, for athletes if they want to delve into that. And, uh, you know, Twitter and uh, Instagram as well, man. It's just uh, Dr. Rob Bell. But I appreciate you guys having me on, man. That's awesome, well, man. Thank, thank you, you very much. So, yeah, thanks for coming on. I, I've got guys. a, a desk full of post-it notes here, so nice. I appreciate it. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll let you get back to your busy day and then dealing with the madness that's going on in the world. But uh, thank you so, so much again. And, and guys, uh, go out, give them a follow, reach out to them. Definitely pick up his books and and get your get your mind right. Awesome, thanks, guys. Thank All right, you. thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for listening in to the Hoosier Kayak Bassin podcast once again. Um, we are going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back with some final thoughts. So listen up and stay tuned. TRC Covers proudly supports the Hoosier Kayak Bassin podcast. They've been a longtime sponsor of Alan and mine, um, and we have nothing but good things to say about them. They offer the best rod protection on the market. Their covers float, they're handcrafted, they're made in America, they're completely customizable. They're dipped with a special rubber compound on each end to keep your rod tips from busting out the top of the covers or your hooks getting stuck on the mesh. They go up and down the rod really easily the mesh is a little tighter weave than you see with other brands so you're not going to have your guides popping through so you know go check them out if you're in the market for some rod covers or if you've already got some but maybe they're not doing the job right get something that's actually going to protect your rod check them out trccovers.com use promo code hkb10 at checkout you're going to get 10 percent off your order uh, the next time you you place one so go check them out trccovers.com you can also find links um, in the description of the podcast and on our website at hoosierkayakbassin.com are you looking for a premium fishing jersey this season that's not going to break the bank and leave you some money left over for entry fees? Well, if that's the case, then you need to check out 316 Active, making premium quality fishing jerseys at an affordable price. They look great, they wear well, and they're fully customizable. Check them out on Facebook, 316 Active. Shoot them a message, let them know we sent you. You'll get a 10% discount on your next order. These things are already great priced, so go check them out, 316 Active. All right, guys, we just wrapped up with uh, Dr. Rob Bell, and that was that was super cool. Like, that was really helpful for me. Hopefully, it was helpful for some of the other people listening here. I mean, there's, there's a lot of information jam-packed into that little 50-minute stretch there. Um, you know, Alan, I know this is something that me and you have talked about a lot, this mental side. And th- there are there are so many different viewpoints on this but he really summed it up for me in three things you know he talked about preparation and routine being one of the or if not the most important thing in all of this Um, and then secondly that win mentality that was huge i've heard that before but honestly i'd forgotten all about it that win mentality of you know um what's what's going on right now what's important right now in this situation and staying focused on that rather than the end game and then of course that ability to overcome and take those breaks when something happens and things aren't going the way or you just maybe they maybe they're going okay but you're just mentally not in it taking those quick little moments to reset and get back in it. Those are the three big takeaways that I had. I don't know about you, um, but uh, maybe you want to share yours real quick. Yeah, I definitely like that idea of just taking those small little micro breaks um, while you're out on the water. Um, Even if things are going well, right? Get it before you start to go off the cliff. Yeah. So I think that's a good takeaway because, you know, we're out there for a lot of time, right? And there's a lot of stuff going on in that, in there and, and taking that little, mental reset you know grabbing a snack maybe or something like that so uh a good thing i took from that and then i also like the you know making the conscious decision to evaluate what happened during your performance right what went really well what didn't go so well what can you take away from that and reapply um i think 
sometimes we don't want to think about what didn't go go well, right? We just yeah. want to put it off to the side. But if you look at it from the what can I learn from this, then right, you can you can take that learning and then push away that bad stuff and and right move on to the next event. So those are the two ones, uh, two things that I um, kind of thought were the biggest for me. Um, yeah. And and I guess that other one. And we hear about this a lot, you know, and I'm going to kind of summarize what I heard him say is be you. Yeah. Right. We, we all kind of have our own tempo. We kind of have our own right. mental level of, of energy we're going to have and don't try to be something that's not you. Cause then starts, right. I, I'm not going to be, I can Ellie, right. I'm not going to yeah. be the guy screaming out there on the water and going crazy and all that kind of stuff. That's him. Right. And that's, and, and that works for him. Um, but it's not me and I should stay where, you know, kind of in my space. Yeah. And keeping that tempo, right. I thought that was a great point for him. And, and, and honestly there, I, I could have probably spent all day asking him questions. Um, and so maybe I'll be a great client of his, I don't know, but, um, I, I think keeping that tempo throughout your preparation all the way to the end, um, was a key thing that he said that I, that was another takeaway for me that I really liked because I often will change my tempo too much. Um, probably now that I'm reflecting back on things and looking at it. Um, and, and, and that's a lack of consistency, which leads to, you know, that, that mental breakdown or, or not maybe a breakdown, but a, a lapse in judgment or whatever it ends up being. Right. Um, so that was a cool one. I also liked, he was talking about, you know, recording things after the fact, writing things down, keeping that di diary, journal, uh, whatever you want to call it. And we talked a little bit about watching video. Um, that's huge. That's huge. You know, um, earlier and in, in this before we had him on, we, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, Angler and what we're doing with Angler um, here. Here's your kayak bass. And, and, and that is a big piece of it. We record that information. Um, because of what it allows us to do in our preparation for the next event or the next year. Um, and so also taking the time after an event to go back and, and, and focus on what didn't go right um, is, is huge and something that I'm definitely going to start doing because I think about it, but I don't know that I've ever actually recorded it, uh, what didn't go right and what did go right. Um, so, you know, definitely going to take some time to start doing that as well. Um, yeah, I kind of had the one, you know, I had the tournament earlier this year um, where I just kind of popped in and fished it and it didn't go well. And right, I kind of put it out there and just said, hey, uh, I'm not doing that again. Right. Yeah. So I think that I, I took the time there to kind of do that and kind of wanted to put that out there um, for others to hopefully learn from that and say, hey, you know, just <clears throat> um, evaluate and learn from what happened here, because as he said, you're not always going to be successful. Um, and, and we don't like it. Right. But he said it, right. You fail. Yeah. You just don't want to fail. Do it. Yeah. You fail. Yeah. And that makes people really uncomfortable. Sure. But, but taking that and then trying to reapply those learnings yeah. is the, is the important part. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And not letting it discourage you and get you down and, you know, change your change your whole plan and and, and everything that you've got going forward but just a, a accepting the fact that it didn't go the way that you wanted and learn from it i love that that was great right. that was great it was all good tons tons of awesome stuff he's got a lot of great resources as well out there we'll drop links um, in the description we'll make posts so that you can find all of this stuff uh you know definitely uh, appreciate dr bell coming on and, and and going through everything with us. That was huge. So please, uh, you know, take the time to go check him out and see what he's doing and see if you can, you know, if you're interested in this topic or you want to improve that mental game, um, go out, find his stuff and, and, and start working on that. Um, other than that, you know, I don't well, know if you have anything else. Well, I was going to say, so one of the things that we've really tried to do with this podcast is bring some different yeah. things that others aren't right. This is an example of that. Absolutely. Right. I think our last one was an example of that. So we're reaching out, getting to some things that um, uh, other people aren't touching on. And yep. and that's what we, we want to separate ourselves by doing that. So 
hope you guys enjoyed this. If there is a topic that you think is kind of pushing those boundaries of something that other people aren't getting to, send it to us. Let Absolutely. us know, right? Yeah, let us know what you want to hear. Yeah, yep. this podcast is for you all. Um, we're trying to do our best to think of ideas um, that would be interesting and different, but uh, we want your guys' feedback as well, what you like, what you didn't like. Um, you know, you can always message us directly. Send us an email at who's your kayak bassin at gmail.com uh, message us on facebook instagram check us out on the website all those kinds of good things let us know we want to hear drop us uh drop us a review too if you would please uh, if you're listening to this um we are working on getting this podcast on more platforms they should have it should have been available on all platforms by now but uh, unfortunately there was a there's a little bit of a mix up so that is being worked on so hopefully that'll be available for you soon but it is available on YouTube and Google and others. Uh, so make sure to, uh, if you can, give us a review, give us some feedback. We appreciate that. Uh, with that being said, we're gonna close it out tonight. Make sure to continue to listen here though. We're gonna have some announcements um, and some, uh, some updates for you guys on the back end of this. But uh, for now, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching and tune in for the next episode uh, when we announce it. All right, everyone, tournament season is about to kick off in the Hoosier State, and I want to go through and give you guys a heads up on all the awesome events that are getting ready to come your way in April so you can uh, you can get signed up and make plans for them if you haven't already. So we've got four awesome series here in the state of Indiana plus KBF Challenge Series. So there's five platforms for you to uh to get involved in here in the state of Indiana, as well as other online challenges and stuff like that that cover our area. I, I can't go over them all, so I'm just going to stick to the to the five, um, which is Grassroots Bass Yakking, Southern Indiana Yak Anglers Club, Indiana Kayak Anglers, and uh, KBF, and then also Kayak Anglers of Southern Indiana. So let's, let's get into it because it is a long list. Um, all of this will be available also on HoosierKayakBassin.com under Tournament Central. You'll find a complete calendar with all of the events for the season from those five organizations. All right, so kicking off the month, we've got uh, SIAC, Southern Indiana Yak English Club, hosting their HOW event, their charity event of the year. Um, proceeds from this or a portion of entry fees are going to Heroes on the Water, our local chapter here in Indiana. It's a month-long event. It's open to everyone who wants to participate. Um, all you have to do is fish Indiana public waters, catch your best five fish, upload them to the Tourney X app, and you have a shot at uh, you know taking home some money while supporting a great cause and getting some very valuable points at the beginning of the season for SIAC. So that's going to be a great event. Um, I know Alan and myself are excited to get started on that. So if you haven't already, you've got till the end of the month to get signed up for that. So get on Tourney X and log in and uh, sign up for that event. Next up, we have uh, three events coming from Grassroots Bass Yak in April 9th through the 13th. So again, this is kind of a different format. Each lake has its uh, has its own series, um, and you get to pick one day within that time frame, the 9th through the 13th of April. You pick the day, you go fish and catch your best bag. At the end of the at the end of the period, they will um, you know they'll tally up the results and and have a winner. So those three events. Um, April 9th through the 13th are on Sugar Creek, Glen Flint, and Sullivan Lake. Uh, Sugar Creek, again, Glen Flint, and Sullivan Lake. Those are the first three events for Grassroots Bass Yakin, uh, April 9th through the 13th. Sign up as well on Tourney X for those. Then they've got uh, West Boggs, uh, April 23rd through the 26th. Kicking things off at West Boggs, that is a bass factory loaded loaded with fish should be a good tournament check that one out on tourneyx.com as well or on the tourneyx pro app uh, next up is niona south mud lake that is going to be april 30th through may 3rd april 30th through may 3rd uh, pick a day fish niona or south mud lake 
um, enter your fish for a chance to uh, to win some money there and some valuable points towards the uh, you know angler of the year race and to qualify for the grassroots bass jack and state championship which is going to be held it was just announced it's going to be held at shackamack state park you can pick any of the three lakes there within the state park and uh, you're fishing for the the glory and also a hobie compass donated by sun valley sports so shout out to uh, sam at sun valley sports for donating uh, that awesome rig to grassroots bass yakin for their second season um, after that we have actually before that is ika they have an event on uh wawa c at uh on april 25th yeah april 25th ika will be on wawa c that's their first event of the season as well should be a great one this is a uh this is an awesome awesome lake it's it's known to have not only quantity but quality in it as well so guys should come up with a big bag it's going to be primed that time of year as long as the weather um you know isn't too bad it should be a really good bite i'm excited for that one with kbf um and hobie and bass suspending events uh, for the next 60 days at least hopefully all of our local stuff will continue to go on and guys who may otherwise have missed that event will sign up and uh, it should be good so also kayak anglers of southern indiana will be at shackamack state park on april 19th for their first event uh same thing there you can fish all three lakes uh, sign up. That is the only one that's not available on Tourney X. Uh, they do it old school still. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're going to pay at the, at the ramp, at the meeting. So check out Kayak Anglers of Southern Indiana on Facebook to get more information on that. Uh, but IKA, SIAC, and Grassroots Bass Yakin will all be available on Tourney X to sign up. There are no club dues or anything like that to get involved. Now, uh, finally, we have KBF with the second state challenge of the year. So we're wrapping up the March state challenge right now as I'm recording this. Uh, but the April state challenge kicks off on April 1st and runs through April 21st. That as well is available on Tourney X. Get signed up for that. Um, if you're going to be fishing in Indiana in April, you might as well be signed up for it. It's just $30. Gets you a shot at a little extra cash. Also, those points go towards the Challenge Series Angler of the Year standings and can get you qualified for not only the Challenge Series Championship that will be held later in October in conjunction with the Trail Series Championship, but you can also qualify for the 2021 National Championship. So make sure you sign up for these events, support the local clubs, get out with your friends, do some fishing, uh, and hopefully catch a big bag. All right, guys, so that's tournament recaps, or not recaps, but uh, upcoming tournaments announcements. A couple other quick announcements for you. Um, you know, tonight we talked a little bit about Angler and how we're partnering with them. So if you guys haven't been to the website yet, we have a really awesome um, section in the site dedicated to spotlighting local anglers. Right now we got Chris Hildebrand up there. Before that, it was Jackson Orr. Um, it's just called Angler Spotlight. Well, now it's going to be officially the Angler, A-N-G-L-R Spotlight, sponsored by Angler. Um, so we're going to put that up there, a little announcement about that. So again, just uh, with our partnership with them, um, you know, we want to we want to promote them because they're giving us an off, awesome platform to share all of our information and your guys' information. If you guys want to contribute to the HKB blog, just hit me up, send me, email me the blog at HoosierKayakBassin at gmail.com. Um, and you know, all goes well. You guys can, uh, you guys can get your, get your content on our, on our site and share it with the rest of the, uh, the Hoosier Kayak Bassin nation. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we got a couple other announcements that'll be coming up very soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're really excited. We've got uh, some other companies that we've partnered with uh, here recently, and we we want to um, we want to you know share that stuff with you as soon as we can. So stay tuned for those as well. 
Otherwise, it's a crazy time, guys. Uh, everything that's going on with this virus and, and in the world right now. Hopefully, you guys can still get out there and fish. I know in some states it's a little less likely, but here in Indiana, luckily so far, knock on wood, all of our water is open, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and you can still get out there and fish. In fact, Indiana DNR is encouraging it. So that's really cool to see. So hopefully you guys can get out there and fish the rest of this month and, and really start to prepare well for April. We'll bring you another episode early April. Um, hopefully in a couple weeks we'll have another episode for you. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be yet. Um, but as soon as we know, we'll announce that for you. Anyway, guys, thanks again for listening in. And uh, thanks for checking out all the updates and upcoming tournaments with me. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.